Calling all detectives. There's no crime in buying real estate, but when I bought some land, it landed me in the middle of a mystery. That is the situation on this page from my casebook, the casebook of Jerry Browning, private detective. Believe me, there are times when a private detective like me, Jerry Browning, can be too smart. Parcel 12, lot 18, subdivision 29 of Lewis County, going for $200, going for $200. It was the annual tax sale auction of Lewis County, and I was attending it with my friend Buck Buchanan, a guy who helps keep auctioneers in business. As the auctioneer continued his chant, Buck nudged me. Listen, Jerry, only $200 for two acres of land. Why, that's downright stealing. So what? Nobody's stealing it from you, Buck. But Buck didn't hear me. The fever was on him. $300! Told to the gentleman for $300. A short, stocky man who had just burst into the crowded room waved his arms frantically. Wait! Wait! $400! It was too late, of course. Buck Buchanan has attended too many auctions not to know his rights. The sale was final. But as we walked out of the auction room a few minutes later... Hey, Mr. Buchanan, I'm Ned Peabody. I'll give you 500 spot cash for that parcel of land you just bought. Buck hesitated. A fast profit of $200, probably the first profit he'd ever made on an auction deal, was obviously tempting. But before he could accept, don't take it, Buck. If it's worth 500 to him, it's worth 500 to me. Buck turned to me, grasped my hand. Jerry, you just bought it. Hand over the 500. And that's how it happened that four hours later, I was inspecting my property. Two acres of swamp in the dead center of nowhere. When somebody offered my friend the fast profit on tax sale land, I had to open my big mouth. I listened to the merry melody of the frogs and surveyed my waterlogged domain. It was a damp, dismal swamp, surrounded on all sides by bleak prairie. I wasn't too discouraged. If the land was worth $500 to Mr. Ned Peabody, there was value of some kind in it, and I aimed to find out what. Mike Lane at the Lane Laboratories took the bottle of brew I handed him, held it up to the light, shook it, smelled it, tested its contents. Finally, Jerry, this stuff is mud. Sure, I know it is, but what kind? Mike looked thoughtful. Sticky. I grabbed the bottle away from him. Okay, wise guy, but I paid $500 for the land it came from. You got stuck. I was shaken, but not licked. I'm a man who's got a lot of friends, and one of them is Joel Furness, the geological engineer. Joel stood a respectful distance from the edge of my property and gazed bleakly at its undulations. Well, Joel, what do you think of it? Well, it'd, uh, it'd make a nice wild bird shelter, I guess. Stop kidding me. People bid for this land. I heard them do it myself and then tried to buy it away from the guy who got it. Did? Sell it. Joel, what's the possibility of there being oil on this land? <laughs> Not a chance in the world. I wasn't ready to concede the point. Oil has been found in some mighty peculiar places, Joel, even under the ocean. Joel nodded his agreement. Okay, Jerry. You put up 50 grand for a test boring and we'll give your theory a whirl. Oh, well, let's go back to town. In the next couple of days, I investigated the possibilities of my land being needed as part of an airport or some kind of building project or for a highway. I drew blanks each time. Then, the man who entered my office was Ned Peabody. Well, young fella, you about ready to sell that land yet? I didn't want to seem anxious. I might. Make me an offer. I'll give you what I bid. Four hundred. I hesitated. After all, my business was being a detective. I couldn't afford to waste weeks trying to figure out why a dismal swamp would have any value to anybody. But Peabody misinterpreted my silence. All right, all right. I'll give you five hundred. In fact, for a fast deal, I'll give you five fifty and you get a small profit. That did it. Get out of here. I'll never sell that land. Not at any price. Who did he think he was trying to put something over on? I was a detective, wasn't I? Solving things was my business, wasn't it? Okay, I'd solve the riddle of those two miserable acres of swamp if I never did another thing again. Uh, 
A man from the Walker Dredging Company was very unhappy. Dredge this land? Compose yourself, Mr. Browning. You don't really want to spend a quarter of a million dollars on dredging and filling, do you? Enjoy its natural wild beauty. Listen to the birds and the happy croaking of the frogs. Well, I've got to get back to town. So there I was. Jerry Browning, property owner. In a frame of mind where people were beginning to think I didn't have all my buttons. I stood there for a long time, listening, as recommended, to the birds and to the frogs. Obviously, I hadn't been going about this thing properly. I wasn't thinking like Jerry Browning, private detective. But I aim to start doing so as of this minute. I got into my car and drove away, but not too far away. Just far enough to find a place where I could conceal my car from view. Then I walked back, found an easy hiding place in the tall grass. It would have made a swell duck blind if there'd been any water instead of mud or any ducks. That was about four in the afternoon. I settled myself for a nice long wait. What with frogs and insects, my swamp was a real noisy and busy place after dark. But those weren't the only things that made it busy. About eight o'clock, I saw bobbing lights approach, men with carefully shielded lanterns. By that dim light, I could see that there were three of them in rough work clothing and hip boots. They were all carrying big gunny sacks, and they waded boldly into the swamp. I watched them work for a while, and then I stood up. Don't move, any of you, or you'll be shot for trespassing. I had no intention of shooting anybody, didn't even have a gun with me, but the threat worked. Don't shoot! I'll pay for everything! Yeah, it was Ned Peabody and his two sons, and what they'd been doing was catching frogs. There's a big demand for frogs' legs, brings big price, Mr. Browning, and this is the only place in the whole county where there's thousands of them. The upshot was that Peabody bought the land from me for a thousand dollars. No fortune, but not even very good pay for all the work I'd done. Still, a profit. More important, it taught me a lesson. Like I said, if you try hard enough, you can sometimes beat the other man at his own game. But you can generally do better sticking to your own.